Hi, my name is Darren Austin, and in this episode, I'm gonna be looking at the difference between the free version of DaVinci Resolve and the studio version, the paid version. Now, as we know, the DaVinci Resolve free version is incredibly powerful, but there is a lot that you get for your $295 if you upgrade to the studio version. There are so many features, I'm not gonna be able to show you in just one episode, so I'm gonna to focus today on the open effects. I'm gonna show you every single effect and show you whether it's in the free version or the studio version. I'm gonna show you my favorites, and I'm gonna show you a few little quick ways of using them, and this will be the definitive guide to which effects you pay for and which ones are free. So along with obviously the Magic Mask tool, you've got the DaVinci Neural Engine, you've got noise reduction, you've got multiple GPU support, you've got acceleration of H.265 and H.264, you've got advanced HDR support and many more things. You've also got a ton of things in the open effects. So let's go and take a look. So I'm in the color page and I've got an assortment of clips that's gonna help me to explain some of these OFX. I'm not gonna show you every single one, but what I am gonna do is list every single one and demonstrate a few that I feel are relevant and ones that I particularly use on a regular basis. So I'm gonna change my mode. I'm gonna press Shift F and that's gonna put me into a full screen mode, but still with my controls. And if I put on my nodes here, and I'm also gonna put on my clips at the bottom. So we're basically losing all the primary controls down at the bottom, because we're not gonna look at any of that. Each of these shots has just got a basic start grade on it, and then I've got a second node ready to do some effects on it. So all the effects lie up here in the open effects. And you can see them listed here, and they're in sections. So you've got resolve effects, blur, you've got effects color, you've got generators, keys, etc., lights, all that sort of thing. And each of these can be collapsed, so you can actually have them in quite a slim view. And any of these effects can be added to your favorites. So if I take lens blur, for example, I have a star appears, and if you just literally press that star, I'm not right clicking or anything, just literally press it, that is now added to your favorites. So if I click up here, you can say favorites, and all the starred effects are now in my favorites. So you can choose ones that you use a lot, stick them in your favorites, then you'd have to scroll through all of these effects. Okay, I'm gonna take that back to show all. I'm gonna take this one off, and what I've done is I've gone through every single effect and I've starred the ones that are in the studio version, so the paid version of Resolve. So anything that is free doesn't have a star next to it and anything that's paid has a star next to it. So I'm gonna go through these methodically one by one and show you the exact difference between paid and the free version. So all of the blur effects are available in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So you've got your box blurs, Gaussian blurs, all those things are in there, absolutely free. When we come down to the next section, color, here, we have probably half of them are only available in the studio version, so you have to pay for it. So let's have a look what that is. So the first thing we've got here is chromatic adaptation. Now chromatic adaptation is quite a complex effect. If I just throw that on, it works on a series of algorithms here. These are very detailed algorithms, very scientifically calculated. And what it allows me to do is change the source lighting to a different target lighting, but in a much more technical way than just playing with something like color temperature. So if I change my D65 lighting here to D55, you see that has enhanced our color here, and it's done it in a scientific way using the Bradford model. So that is what chromatic adaptation is doing. And when you need it, this tool is fantastic. Okay, coming down next, color compressor. I've dealt with color compressor before, but this is basically allowing you to take a target color and compress the hue, saturation, and luminance towards that color. Now you generally would use this in conjunction with a key. So for example, if you had a product, let's say we wanted to change the, the grayness of this Mac, we could, we could set a new target color and compress the hue down and obviously by keying this we're making sure that it doesn't affect the rest of the image. Like I said I'm not going to go through and demonstrate every single effect on here because this will be a two-hour tutorial but what I do intend to do is over the next few weeks and months is take a particular O effect and I'm going to concentrate on it and show it in depth. Okay color space transform is obviously in the free version as we need that to change from various color spaces to other color spaces and, and different camera models. The color stabilizer is only available in the studio version. Now this is a fantastic effect. Let me show you very quickly how this works. Let's play this clip first. Now you can see there's quite a bit of exposure change there because the lights are physically changing. So what we can do to just uh, normalize that a little bit, we can take our color stabilizer. You can either work with selected areas or the entire frame. 
and there's various options in here. You can choose just white balance or brightness or whatever. I'm just gonna take the default for now. And if I just say live region analyze and press play, what that does is it analyzes the image and it then makes the differences in exposure far less. This is great for when you've got very quick exposure changes happening on a camera and you just want to balance it out. Contrast pop, I use a fair bit. So this is really good for just giving an image a little bit of punch. So you can see there, that's just punching in there. Use it sparingly, but it's a really good tool. So DCTL, this is DaVinci Color Transform Language. So it's Blackmagic's own language, and it allows you to basically perform mathematical operations on the image. So you can program it to have your own scripts, you import your DCTLs, and you can send them to other people, and you can basically manipulate the image with various different maths. So you might be looking at S-curves and how tight those S-curves are, for example. Uh, it's a really useful tool. Okay, dehaze, again, only in the studio. So let's go and see how good this is. If I take this shot here and just literally apply dehaze, you see we get the image, we get all this sort of hazy image really brought to life. In fact, if we go to this shot here, we've got, we're really shooting into the sun here. So let's just take out the haze. And I'm just taking the default there. But again, you can see with a bit of manipulation, we'd get this looking really good. So that's what the dehaze tool is doing. False color, okay, so this is emulating. Let me get a better image than that. If I apply false color, it's basically emulating what's going on inside your camera display. So here we're looking at our levels. We can change this to not be a camera model. You can actually get creative with it. So we can use this down here, for example, there is 10 bands and you can have that in black and white, which is really good. And you can use this literally for analyzing your image for actually getting your exposures right. Or you can use it as a creative effect. I've actually got false color on my Nob Omniscope that I use for my scopes and I use it a lot. I really like having the false color on there. Okay, so the rest of the ones are available in the free version of Resolve. So you've got your Flickr gamut, uh, gamut mapping and invert color. So moving down, let's just scroll down this list a little bit. So next we've got our generators. So we've got our color generator, which is in the free version. You've got the color palette here and we've got a grid. Now the color palette is really useful for just analyzing your image. So we've seen what color range we're using. So this is in the lows, the mids, and the highlights. And this is a basically general look at what we're looking at. These are really useful for if you're trying to give a client a, a reference or a tone that you want to be using, then this is a really good little thing that you can do. You can grab a still of this and export that out and send it to your client. Now, the other way you can do is you can invert that and take a reference that a client sends you and apply the color palette to it. So here I've got a couple of film stills and I've just applied the color palette effect to it. And now I can see what's happening in the lows, the mids and the highlights. This is the color palette that's been chosen for this film. And again, another one. And then you can analyze these. You could take a measurement off it, uh, RGB value, whatever you want to do. Okay, back to our library. And then grid is in the free version. Uh, all the keying effects are in the free version apart from the alpha mat shrink and grow. So this allows you to have extra tools to grow and shrink any external mats that you're bringing in. Okay, so when we move on to light, let's just change this image. Let's take this shot here. So when we're moving on to the light effects, we have um, three out of the five are only available in the studio. So you get glow for free and you get light rays for free. But what's missing is this one, you've got aperture diffraction. Now this is really nice, okay? So obviously you've got a lot of control here, okay? But you can get some really nice effects using this aperture diffraction. It's, a, it's quite a subtle tool. And this is basically emulating the starburst effect that you can get when you're filming. Uh, lens flares, we all know what lens flares are like, so obviously these are uh, these can be made more subtle. I wouldn't always take a default on here, but you've got some other things in here. It's sci-fi look, for example. And don't forget you can use window shapes and tracking with all these effects as well, so you can get some really nice effects going on. And the lens reflections is the next one. So that, again, look at all the control we've got down here. You can control every parameter, every element is individually controllable. And there's some presets in here as well, so if we go to summer, Okay, you've got some really nice warm tones in there and you can adjust absolutely everything in here. Really, really powerful tools these are. So again, only available in the studio where the star is. So coming down to refine, you've got beauty and face refine. Okay, so let's take a different shot for this. Click on here. Beauty is a kind of cut down face refine, but it doesn't analyze the face, it analyzes the whole image. So if we go to advanced, we've got much more control now, we can control exactly the strength of this and it's a really useful tool if you need to work quickly so the face refinement tool i've already done a full episode on exactly how this works in full detail so have a look at that and again only available in the paid version of davinci resolve okay so the resolve effects revival this is a really powerful section and 
only available in the studio. None of these effects are available in the free version. So let's take a look at some of these. So we've got automatic dirt removal, does exactly what it says. If you've got archive footage that's very old, apply this, it's gonna take out the dirt for you. Uh, chromatic aberration removal, again, it's gonna help any of those aberrations that you've got. Dead pixel fixer, really easy. You can literally drag and drop this if you've got any dead pixels anywhere. I don't think we do have in this image, but for example, I could take that out. In fact, with the dead pixel, it doesn't have to be a single pixel. If I want to remove the Apple logo, yeah, it's gone. So it's a really powerful tool. So let's change that. Now with the dead pixel fixer, this obviously stays static because it's a pixel. D-band, this is amazing for 8-bit footage. If you've got that sky that's really banding, drop the D-band on there and it works wonders with 8-bit footage or you know if you've got if just, just footage where you've got really bad banding. D-flicker is gonna help if you have issues with uh, strobing and that sort of thing in uh, fluorescent lights, you've got fine check shirts, that sort of thing. This D-flicker works wonders on that. The dust buster, again, it's just gonna get rid of hair and dust. It's a really very useful tool. Noise reduction does exactly what it says on the tin. Object removal, so this, uh, in my opinion, is quite subjective to what you put it on. On. I've had very mixed results on this. Sometimes I've had absolutely stunning results that I really didn't think would happen. Other times when I thought something was quite easy, it's actually not done an amazing job of it. But I'm sure this is a good work in progress. They're, again, just you know, showing the absolute power of the neural engine in DaVinci Resolve. Patch replacer, this is great. So if I just drag and drop that on, it's kind of like a cloning tool. So we can take our source. We're going to get rid of that light switch on the wall. Just do that. And then we want it to patch to that so there we go we've got a nice clean wall and this is trackable so we can actually track because this shot actually moves so we can track that using the tracker and you'd go to the effects tracker to make that work so some really powerful tools in the revival so moving on to resolve effect sharpen these are only available in davinci resolve studio so you basically have much more control than you would with the regular sharpen tools so let me go over here let's reset that and I'm just gonna apply sharpen and you can see already we get much more control over our sharpening. So we can go fine, medium and large detail. Moving on from that, we've got sharpen edges. So this will only do the edges. This is great for drone footage actually. If you wanna really um, spice up your drone footage, this will really help you. And then we've got our soften and sharpening. So it's doing both at the same time, which gives you a really pleasing image. Obviously uh, making sure you, you do work with the controls to get the best out of the image. Next is the stylized effects. Now, quite a few of these are in the free version. Uh, so your drop shadows, edge detect, emboss, these are quite sort of you know, cartoon-like effects. You've got an abstraction available in Studio. So that's doing, uh, making it abstract. You've also got pencil sketch. So we can add in pencil sketching. So we can do that sort of thing. Let's make the stroke length a bit further. And so these, these are really useful just for, yeah, for backgrounds, for little transition wipes, for effects. You've got a stylized one here. So this is quite nice. It's got a load of defaults in there. So just play around with these. So again, I wouldn't say these are particular grading tools, but for a particular effect, they're really easy to just drag and drop on. So the next studio feature is Tilt Shift Blur. So this is that kind of model look. It's uh, it, it makes everything look a little bit surreal and you can change all the parameters in here. And what I tend to do is work with this depth map preview first. So I sort of work out where I want my focus range. And you can adjust that like this, then put the preview back on. It's a really good effect for you know opening credits and things like that. It's actually quite fun. Okay, so next up we have watercolor. So vignette is in the free version and then there's a watercolor effect. So let's just take a shot. Uh, I don't know, let's take, let's take this guy again and throw in our watercolor. I think it's gonna be pretty obvious what that's gonna do. And there we've got various degrees of that. I don't know how much I'm gonna use that, but there you go, it's in there anyway. Back to our library. So the next section is this Resolve Effects Temporal. So these, so two of these are in the studio version and stop motion is in the free version. So Motion Trails is gonna give you, uh, I'll show you what it does. It gives you like a, a weird effect on there. So let's just drag and drop that on. And as I play the clip, you get this sort of trail effect, I guess. Back to the library. And if I change that to Smear, what Smear is doing is kind of giving you like a motion blur effect, but it is slightly different to motion blur. And obviously you have motion blur controls in the noise reduction tool. So Resolve Effects Texture, most of these tools are in the studio version. The only ones in the free version are the film damage and the JPEG damage, but you really want film grain. So this is fantastic. This is in the studio version only. And 
Film grain is film grain. I use it all the time. Analog damage is going to give you that sort of retro VHS look. Obviously, you've got all the settings in here, so you can take off the scan lines, etc. if you want to. Uh, detail recovery as well. You've got your uh, film damage in the free one, but you've also got here texture pop. Now, texture pop is one of my new favorite things, and I've really got into using this. And I'm going to do a dedicated tutorial on this because I really am into this texture pop at the minute. Okay, Resolve Effects Transform. So Camera Shake and Match Move are in the studio version. Now Match Move, I've already done a very detailed episode on. You can also download the elements that I used in that if you click the link in the description. And for free, you're gonna get the Transform tool, which is basic transform, so it's basic image movement, and the video collage feature, which is actually quite fun. So moving down from there, Resolve Effects Warp, everything is in the free version. So all those lens distortions and ripples and stuff, all available in the free version. This stuff down here is my Sapphire plugin, so I've got a load more plugins in my system, but we're not dealing with those. I'm just talking about the ones that come with DaVinci Resolve and the ones that you get with DaVinci Resolve Studio. So I'm sure you can see there, I think there's 39 effects that are only available in the studio. And don't forget, you can play with them. They are watermarked, so you can still play with the effects, but I can't see any reason why anyone would not want to buy a studio. So I hope that's finally demystified which of the open effects are free and which ones you pay for. Even in the free version, you can still access the studio version effects. You'll just get a watermark on there. And I'd just quickly like to say thank you to Simon Hall and Catherine and the team at Blackmagic Design because they helped me understand which ones are free and which ones you pay for. Uh, the studio version as it stands today is £225, $295. It's a no-brainer. That's a lifetime access to all those effects that I've just shown you, plus all the things I mentioned at the beginning. It's an absolute no-brainer. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.